Good afternoon, welcome to EduSat Network. Friend, as you know, this week we have organized a series of lectures on communication theory. We will first come to know about introduction of communication theory, introductory part today, and then we will move further and we will talk about sociological theory, political economy theory, and development theory. There are various other theory, but we will try to understand only the major one which has given shape to a kind in developing countries, a different uh, uh, meaning of the development and how development could be done. So, the communication is a very important issue, you know, and theory has been uh, performed by the different uh, scholars. There are some philosophy behind this. So, first we try to understand the basic meaning of communication. That's why today the lecture is a very introductory sort of thing and then we'll move on different uh, paths. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio an eminent communication scholar, Professor Saswati Goswami. She is presently associate professor in Indian Institute of Mass Communication, a premier institution of uh, communication in India. And she has experience of both the world, uh, working as a professional in different uh, uh, media organization. And presently, uh, as you, I told you, uh, she is working as an associate professor in Indian Institute of Mass Communication. So she has the knack of both the world, professional as well as academic and also have a, a keen interest in different uh, health communication program and political communication. So her knowledge will certainly help us to understand the, the today topic and the communication theory in a new perspective. So on her behalf, I welcome her and uh, without taking much time, I request her to start her lecture. Welcome, Eva. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Uh, good afternoon. I hope this uh, three-day journey that I'm supposed to do with you would be something which uh, adds to your understanding of communication. Uh, problem with communication is that we take it as something which is given. And what we do is, uh, we do it every day. We, we, we tend train, train to communicate from the very morning that we get up. The first thing I just think on it, what we do is yawn. And that way we, we uh, let other people know that uh, I'm awake. And that is how I start my day of communication. This particular word communication uh, came from community care, which means to communicate or to share. Communication has a huge lot of uh, perspective on sharing. You communicate because you want to share something, not because communication is a given thing. You observed uh, throughout the day Say some of you have a small kid brother or a sister, or some of you have a kid, a small child. The moment she or he is born, he cries out to communicate to the world that I'm born, see, you take care of me. And uh, similarly, we do it, everybody does it to register our presence that I am here, I want to tell you something. That is the basic important in, uh, thing that we do. We look at uh, the world issues that's been inflicting us right now, the problems of peace and war and terrorism and everything. What do we say? Let us solve the problem with communication. That is through dialogue or discussion. Dialogue and discussions are both communication. So you cannot negate the importance of communication in your life. And this human hours to communicate had given uh, uh, birth to language, given birth to culture, given birth to music, and so many other things, literature, just name it, it is a way of communication. So communication is, in a way, the force that moves our personal as well as social life. Now, uh, let, uh, let me just uh, give you a little brief of four or five uh, theories who had talked about uh, communication, like Wilbur Schramm, you know, the theorist who is uh, so seriously regarded in communication, he had said, sharing of experiences on the basis of commonness. Now, now if you look at his explanation of communication, that is, sharing of experiences on the basis of commonness, two very important things come up. One is sharing and the other is commonness. So the hours to share 
based on something which is common to each other is on which communication moves. Now, Dennis McQuell said communication is the process which increases commonality and that means there is a common ground in a way he is re, re, reconsolidating what Schramm had said. German scholars Katz and Kahn has said it is exchange of information and transmission of meaning. So, here two things come up one is information then transmission and from that information you transmit and the meaning is elicited that is what communication is. William Newman and Charles Summer said it is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinion or emotions by two or more persons. So, it is something which, uh, which ties up so many people together where a number of facts and ideas are disseminated, opinions are made, emotions are generated between people and the real process of communication is elicited. Uh, now, I just a small graph on how communication moves. Simply speaking, there is a speaker who starts the communication process. Say I had started the communication process to, with you, I am transmitting some information or message to you. You absorb it, digest it, extract some meaning out of it and then questions might arise, issues might arise. So, you give it back to me as feedback. If I call, get a call from you, that is the feedback. So, that feedback will make me again answer back on your questions or your queries and then the communication process will continue. So, it is from speaker a message generated to the listener and the listener digesting it and giving a feedback again back to the speaker is what we do in the entire process of communication. Uh, now, what are the basic requirements of communication? Because uh, uh, we generally take it for granted, we never think that there is some requirements of communication. I can just start a communication any day, any moment. But if you look at it, the basic requirement of communication are three, language, culture and environment. Now, how does it really relate to communication? I will just give you an example. Say I am, I speak English and you speak any other language I, which I do not know. I want to communicate with you. How do I do it? I will resort to gestures. That will again my gestures will be shaped in the culture I have grown in. Every culture has a different set of gesture. Like a simple gesture, I say yes and no and some other ethnic community will say no and yes. So, if I say yes and the other person is saying no, yes like this, he will totally not understand my communication. So, the culture becomes very important. Now, say I am in a very normal situation where I have no, no upsetting moments to speak about. So, in that environment you communicate, you try to communicate with me, I will communicate normally. But see I am very upset about something or very excited about something. What happens? I get so excited or so upset that if even you are giving me a very normal communication, you want the smile at me, I might not respond. That smile is also a language. You know my language, but the environment is not conducive to start a communication. So, you see these three issues, language, culture and environment, these three issues coming together and meeting on a certain point actually enhances communication and gives birth to communication. I hope till now I, I have been able to be clear about what I wanted to, to tell you. Now, we generally do not give a little thought about how, what is communication, how it happens and why it happens and are there any types of communication. But if you look at it broadly, uh, we can uh, divide it into three types. One is intrapersonal, 
the other two are verbal and nonverbal of course neither of them are segregated from the other there are meeting points here and there but then these are the main basic issues um, uh, form, uh, forms of communication on which the communication moves. Now, let me uh, tell you a little bit about each of them. Now, intrapersonal is a very exciting form of communication. Say morning you wake up and you try to know or think what are you going to do throughout the day. Like uh, what do I have to do today? Okay, within 8.30 in the morning after breakfast, I have to go somewhere. I go, so, uh, I go to this particular place and meet up someone and discuss with that person particularly this idea. Now, the moment you remember the place, certain communication starts. Okay, where is this place? How do I go? This is the route I will take. No, no, no. This route might have a lot of traffic jump. So, let me to take the other route. This communication is happening inside you. You are not talking to anyone. Next, uh, when you talk about someone, like I am going to meet this particular person A, B, C, D, certain things flashes in your mind. The last meeting, the way that person talks, whether that person will be conducive to your discussion pattern or not, all these things start coming to your mind. In the meantime, there is a call from your family member saying that your breakfast is ready. Immediately you start thinking, okay, I have to take a bath before I go for, the, for breakfast. This, all these things were happening inside you. It was intrapersonal, inside you, you were talking. The moment the family member calls you and says, come have your breakfast, then immediately what you say? Coming, just give me five minutes, I'll have my bath and come. So, that communication becomes verbal communication. The other per intrapersonal communication was a very nonverbal communication that you were indulging in. Uh, what is intrapersonal communication? Let me explain it more to you. This is a type of communication which you do with yourself all your waking hours. All the time while you are awake, you are continuously talking with yourself. You, you think on various things, you analyze people within yourself, you feel good, you get happy, you get angry, all these things happens inside you. But another interpersonal communication which is very interesting is the dream that you dream. And, and during the entire dream process, your communication process actually carries on. There is a debate on whether dream can be called intrapersonal communication or not, but I personally believe that dream is a very nice form of intrapersonal communication. What happens in intrapersonal communication? You receive, you, uh, you, you, you had received some information, you had observed certain uh, activity, you see something, you experience something. All these things uh, leave an, uh, leave an, a sort of impact on you, and that actually starts starts uh, reacting inside you, and you these stimuli that you received from thoughts or senses, these stimuli send signals to the brains, which act as a trigger for communication. It is a pure form of I'm reiterating. It is a pure form of nonverbal communication. And this is one thing every human being does every moment of the day in, in waking hours or maybe while asleep. And now, let me go towards interpersonal communication. This is very direct. This is a very direct form of communication. It is from one person to the other. But certain things needs to be uh, remembered when you uh, th think about interpersonal communication. This is one process which is inescapable. You start a communication, it will continue. And once you start it, you cannot all of a sudden withdraw from it. It is not possible to escape from it until and unless you move away from that zone. It is totally irreversible. The communication process starts, so it goes on. You cannot all of a sudden reverse it and keep silent. 
even for silence to be elicited you have to communicate and keep the silence okay you can say during a discussion okay this much and no further let us end our discussion here and it is very complicated form of communication because what happens like i am communicating right with you i am i am doing my hand movements my eyes are moving my voice is an intonation there is a pitch and all this is ad adding to my communication pattern you will brief me up on the basis of this particular things so it becomes very complicated while you are looking at me and trying to understand what i am saying all these things come into making me a person in your mind that happens with every form of interpersonal communication that you do all the time we are trying to brief up a person while communicating we pick up issues which out of that dialogue or that discussion and think on it that is intrapersonal going inside you while you are doing interpersonal communication and then it is very contextual it, it be, depends on the context on which you are standing maybe you are standing on a bus stand you don't know the other person but you have been waiting for 10 minutes and the bus hadn't come so it was it is a human instinct as i said earlier to communicate so you ultimately communicate and tell the other person whom you are not you don't know at all he's a total stranger or she is a total stranger you say i don't know why the bus is not coming that starts the communication and immediately the other person either smiles or get a little bit upset that you are talking to a stranger or if that person is a open minded person he might or she might say well i don't know i have also been waiting for the last 15 minutes okay where do you do you go from here i'm taking the particular x point where i'll get down from the bus fine i'm actually from the y point oh that is only 2 kilometers you can take any other communication so this is how you start generate a communication and so it become it depends on the context on which you depend so interpersonal communication is a mix of both verbal and non verbal communication you are verbally communicating as well as non verbally communicating too because the other person is briefing you up so you are also briefing up that person developing some ideas about that person and accordingly speaking you might also have some intent in talking to that person you might be say you meet a film personality or a theater personality or an artist or a or, 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 or an author you wanted to talk to that person desperately this is an interpersonal chance of interpersonal communication you want to talk how do you start your your approach will be sir or ma'am i'm so i i read you so much i like your book so much that person might not be as warm as you are but because they have a habit of talking to their fans they that person might easily tell you okay which book have you read so you tell the book but in the meantime you are briefing up that author or the artist or whoever you are talking to this person doesn't seem to be very open he seems to be very closed he doesn't want to talk to me properly all these things will go inside your mind all the time so it's it's context it's it's a very complex mix of verbal and non verbal communication there is another form of communication which is called group communication in a group communication it should be more than two persons because till it's two persons it's interpersonal but when it's more than two person it's group communication a communication becomes a group communication as i said where there are more than two persons group communication can happen in homogeneous and disparate groups let me explain this say there is a group of people meeting together who belongs to a same club or organization who are working to the same uh, issue on the same issue so their pattern of communication will be very homogeneous they will talk about the same way like how to go about this issue how to handle this issue how to talk about these issues and all these things they will talk about the homogeneous pattern of uh, information or discussion but when it is a disparate group what happens is the communication will go here and there it will 
say I, I uh, this is a discussion on poverty elevation. I am working on one area of um, uh, enhancing power, enhancing the uh, economic condition of the people. I am working on providing them, um, say, livelihood. Someone is working on providing them food security. So all of us come together. The issue is same, but our area of focus are different. So I talk to one person who is working on livelihood. He will tell you few things. Then you say, okay, livelihood I understand. But what about food security? Because you are working on food security. So then the livelihood person will talk to you on the perspective of his own experience. So these disparate groups happen. What happens when a disparate group talk is that they try to uh, try to come to certain conclusions, certain uh, information flow, and all these things. But it doesn't happen always. So it depends on the size of the group uh, and, and and the extent and intimacy of the communication. How much of communication is positive communication or communication achieved? It depends on the extent of uh, intimacy of the communication or the group. And in this particular case, feedback is not ensured because I might not be able to communicate with you on your area. I might just listen to it. But my feedback is internalized and I go on doing an intrapersonal communication. But I might be very vocal. I have some idea about what you are working on then my communication will be very vocal and my feedback will be vocal so the discussion will spread out and but then it can be sporadic because i am talking and another person is talking in between comes as it is a group as i said in between comes the third person and all of them come together to discuss and so the feedback might not be the way i had shown you the first graph the um, the, the first talker the message, listener, feedback, it might not go like this. It might go in disparate ways. So the feedback might be sporadic. And again, in group communication, there is, a, there is ample scope of becoming verbal and nonverbal communication. You are verbally communicating as well as you are communicating nonverbally too. Uh, now I will come to mass communication. This form of communication is very technology centric. Uh, technology helps it to communicate in a more wider area. So when communication happens between people in a large number located in various geographical locations via a medium, it can be called mass communication. So it should be a larger group. Larger group in a sense, it is a group which never meets. They might be uh, located in, in various geographical area. There is a medium which transmit like right now I am doing a mass communication. My communication is going to spread out throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the entire country and uh, it is accessible to everyone. And this is why this is mass communication. Mass communication needs a medium to transmit the message. Now when I was doing intrapersonal, it was inside me. I did not need a medium. When it was interpersonal, my voice carried. In fact, even people who cannot speak can still do intrapersonal and group communication through gestures because you are visible. But mass communication needs a medium to transmit message because we are trying to access a bigger group, a wider group, a wider population. So this medium becomes very important. The message can reach a large group in the same moment. So it's, it is very interesting, very challenging, and then it has a very huge potentiality. But the problem is the feedback might not be immediate. I might get a call from you right now or I might not. You might have hundreds of questions which I might not be able to answer. So in the meantime, the enter, tra enter transmission becomes very monotonous. I am directly talking to you, but I am not getting any response. So in a way, this is not a proper communication because I had not been able to get a feedback. But if I get a phone call in between, it will be a proper feedback. And then the next question, the question that you or your, your issues that you uh, uh, raise before me will, will make me think more, think further and uh, and mass communication will be elicited. The real communication process will be elicited. 
Now, I would like to, before going to the next slide, I would like to tell you about the difference between um, uh, group communication and mass communication. What is the difference? Difference is that in a group, I intimately meet them and talk. In mass communication, I do not know who is looking at me, who is listening to me, whether someone is listening to me or at all. But I am full of potentiality that you will listen, hundreds of people will listen to me at the same moment. There is a vagueness, but there is a huge potentiality. So mass communication has become the flavor of the day because of this huge potentiality. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about nonverbal communication now. Uh, this is a form of communication which speaks without being verbal, as I said. Uh, the body language, gestures, eye movements, even silence and silences and pauses in between words, this, all this forms the backbone of nonverbal communication. It's, it's very interesting to understand the role of silence and pauses in between communication. You understood? I just gave a three seconds pause. That was silence. What was I doing? I was thinking, how do I explain it? Now that I had told you about nonverbal communication, so how do I explain it? I took a three seconds pause that was full of silence, but it was a pregnant silence which had a potentiality for me to explain my contentions further. Similarly, my eye movements. I am looking at the camera. I might have looked at somewhere else. That eye contact that I have with you would be missed and my communication will be partial. You won't feel interested to listen to me speaking to someone else rather than to you. Then my gestures. The way I am using my hand, I am giving you my explanation my right now because it is just before you. My eye hand movements, that gives you another idea about me. My body language, whether I am very relaxed or I am very tensed about the entire uh, communication that I am doing right now, it will give you an idea about what I am. That this nonverbal communication adds to my, to your knowledge of me and the knowledge of what I am speaking. It actually adds, nonverbal communication adds a subtle meaning to the verbal communication. Like I say, just one example, where are you going? I put my eyebrows together and I am asking where are you going? It shows that I am not very happy with the place you are going or the, or the entire prospect of going. And I might say, where are you going? The same pitch, same intonation, but my smile and my hand gesture says that it is a lighter tone I am speaking. I am happy about that you are going. So, these smiles and my eyebrows, the, the entire prospect of this frowning, gives you an idea about what I am trying to tell you. That way, it subtly adds meaning to my verbal communication. It becomes very important addition in interpersonal group and other visual medium. I will tell you one thing. Interpersonal communication again, I am briefing, I told you, I am repeating just to remind you. Interpersonal communication, I told you that it is a direct one to one communication where a lot of things happen, lot of things are understood via the visibility, even in group communication. In a group, someone stand out as a leader because of the way he he puts or she puts her words, other perspectives, talks and all these things. And this is, this gestures and nonverbal communication is very important in visual medium like television or maybe cinema. You, you might have seen few films where there is a background, small background score and the actor is just looking somewhere and thinking. There is nothing no words, no other movements that looking up somewhere or looking distantly and thinking. That gives you an idea that this author, that particular actor is in a very procrastinating mood. Hence, it adds to the flavor of the medium and the communication. 
Now that I have given you, uh, I hope, hopefully I have given you an idea about the various forms of communication. What is communication? Why we communicate? What is the basic arch of communication? I would like you to, like to take you towards communication theory. Why do we need theory? Main question is, do we really need theory? And the next question generally comes, what came first? the practice or the theory? This is a very dicey question because theory emanates from practice and practice emanates from theory. It is a very give and take relationship. Once it is practiced properly, according to me, practice generates theory. But practice is again based on the theoretical basis on which the practice is done. When I come to the communication theories that I eventually will talk to you about, then we, you will understand how practice came in and then theory was inserted or excerpted excer out of it. Communication theory is, it is an attempt to describe or explain the communication process. We have been communicating, we had been talking, there was a lot of communication that had happened in the inter world when there was no mass communication or the medium mass media there was book there were books books and books where people were or maybe oral history was also a communication oral literature was a communication this hours to communicate was always there so communication theory actually attempt to describe or explain the communication process how do we communicate why we communicate whom to whom I communicate, what are the perspective on, uh, on the basis of which communication is done, what is the cultural perspective, what is the linguistic perspective, the environmental perspective, the geographical perspective, all these things come in when you de develop a communication theory. It is a construction of what communication involves based on systematic observation. There is a systematic observation of a communication. When we talk about various theories, you will see that actually those theories are trying to systemize the entire communication process. I'll just before we go into all those theories, I'll just give you a small brief, just to root my contention in this particular perspective. Say development communication theory. Development communication theory already decides what is development. And that particular development is based, the idea of development is based on a particular sociological or economic theory of development. Hence, it has already, it already has a theory built into it. On that perspective, the development communication theory had developed. So, I hope you understand that it, it, it is a construction based on systematic observation. There is a systematic scientific observation of that construction. The term communication theory can refer to a single theory or be applied to a body of theories that describe and or explain communication. The intercommunication theory is what there is there in that particular theory there can be only one theory or there can, can be a body of theories. A, a whole lot of people see one theory is started and many, many other theorists add to it. They look at it from different perspective and go on adding to it. They are not removed from the root theory, but they go on adding and enriching the theory. So, it can be a single theory or a body of theories. And to explain a theory is a product of human development and discussion. The amount of the, 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 the number of development um, say milestone achieved, achieved and the discussion generated on that actually gives birth to a theory. Different people see different things and present different ways of knowing. I had told you initially that our culture our linguistic specificity, our environment, our geography, our history, everything adds to the 
or do, do that communication purpose. And that is why we see different thing in different way. You cannot see it in the same way. I see something in my, the way I have developed my, my, my the entire social conditioning is done that will make me see a particular thing in a particular way. So, this is why we see different things and present different ways of knowing. Therefore, theories vary in terms of how they are generated, the kind of research used, the style in which they are presented and the aspect of communication they address. Now, this is a very pregnant term, I would like to explain a little bit. First, thing that this particular explain that, that this particular term says is that uh, about generation process how a theory is generated a theory is generated based on as i said on the particular specific ideas cultural background uh, social conditioning of a human being or a society they are generated from there the kind of research used now, what kind of research would you use in looking into, in, um, into making it into a theory? I might look it in a didactive way, somewhat might look it in a normative way, somewhat, someone might look at the same issue on a political economic way, someone might look at, uh, look at it in a development perspective. So many perspectives are there. It can be a psychological analysis, it can be a sociological analysis, there can be so many ways to actually use research and the style in which they are presented. Now, there are two, three, four styles, one, two, two basic styles that we all know is qualitative and quantitative style. You might quantify something and analyze and then theorize. When we go to few uh, theories, you will understand how quantification is done. And then we might go into a qualitative analysis of the particular issue. And of course, which aspect of communication you are addressing, which is the aspect of communication you are addressing. All these, all these things come together and that is why there are so many variations in, in communication theories or any theory for that matter. I would like to give you a brief about various theories of communication. Uh, there are a number of theories of communication which try to define the process of communication in a scientific way. Let us enumerate a few of them. Now, I just mentioned about the psychological way or sociological way. So, you might be able to relate to it right now. There is something called psychological theories, which look at communication from the psychological point of view. Why I am saying this at this moment, when, to whom, what was the psychology behind the entire communication is what? the psychological theories explain. Within the psychological theories, we have many theories, uh, but I would like to mention a few. The individual difference theory, where the individual difference is analyzed. Every person, every communicator is analyzed as an individual entity. I am just giving a very brief short explanation. There are more nuanced explanation to it, just to introduce you to the idea. There is the learning theory, psychological theory, where learning is given precedence about everything. The um, amount of learning you do, your communication changes. That gives a different bend to your psychology. Then the selectivity theory, where you select your communication and project. Your psychology, your psychological mindset, um, psychological bend of mind gives uh, you a a particular perspective of selecting few ideas and then disseminating. Then of course, the dissonance theory. And then we have uh, sociological theories. Sociological theory is based on the, uh, uh, on the stream of sociology, where sociolo sociology is a stream which tries to explain society and polity and then tie it up with history. It is a very complex uh, stream which enhances our knowledge of the society. In, in, in these sociological theories, we are in, in, in um, the many sociological theories that we have, we can take a few names like cultivation theory, agenda setting theory, uses and gratification theory and dependency theory. Now, 
as in the setting itself explains that communication is done to set certain agenda. I will be handling this or explaining it after f um, in my next or next class. So, I would not like to explain it further, but you just have to understand that there are four theories uses and gratification, how you use and how much gratified you feel. The dependency factor of how much dependence you develop, how much you actually elicit from the entire communication and become what you are. This all this comes together in sociological theories. Then development media theory, this as I said is one theory which had a different sociological or political, political economic background. How development perce was perceived as one pattern of development and accordingly the theories had developed. And in this development media theory, we have two step flow, multi step flow, diffusion of innovation which is very seriously regarded and the author uh, uh, and, and the propagator of diffusion of innovation was Everett M. Rogers. Then development support communication which was an UNDP, United Nations Development Fund, development programs, uh, paid uh, pr uh, communication pr um, theory that was development support communication. Then of course, we have another theory or another um, group of theory called media and modernity theories. And uh, Marshall McLuhan was one of them who had decided that media is more important than the message. He said that medium is the message. It depends the medium is what decides how the message is perceived by the people. So, it is, it is basically in this particular theory medium or the media is regarded more seriously. So, it, 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 it uh, explains the role of media in, in the entire communication process and ties it up with the modernity theory. And in, in this Innes, McLuhan are the main propagator. Then technological determinism, how technology evolves and determines media and public sphere, where Habermas had said that media, in, media creates a public space and through which communication is done and the public space is defined. Gender, gender studies theory, where the feminist theories are the most important theories, the feminist media theory, how, how the media is completely, uh, med media completely um, is a very gender insensitive issue or something like that, radical feminism and the male gaze theory. Now, very interesting theory is the political economy theory. Mm. These theories uh, actually depend on main, the main propagator of this theory is uh, Harman and Chomsky and they had looked at the political economy of media, how media helps in propagating certain um, cert, cer, certain ideas in the entire world and the uh, effects are enhanced. Political economic theory is something which will, we will discuss in details later on. Then media effects theory, propaganda, hypodermic bullet theory and such other theories. Information society where it is mostly looking at the new media. Normative media theory where authoritative libertarian social responsibility, Soviet totalitarian development communication theory and all these things, all these theories come together. The audience theory where concept of mass audience becomes very important. Then of course, the Indian theories which are dependent on the Rasa theory and Sadharanikaran theories. Um, I would like to tell you about how actually this entire process of communication theory began, how did it evolve at all. What happened was during the World War I, a lot of communication was done uh, regarding the war. The, the arm, arm, armed forces would directly be communicated by their base stations that this is where you will go and put your bomb or attack. And that communication was very effective and at that time a lot of radio was used. So, this this generated a lot of academic interest in communication. 
and thus communication became a very popular subject. Then of course, advances in technology, industrialization and literacy made communication a topic of importance. Technology defined communication in a different way. Till then, it was more intrapersonal and group and interpersonal communication, verbal, nonverbal. When it became technology, the reach became faster and people wider. People could be reached throughout the entire, entire world or maybe at least initially few kilometers, 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. The entire perspective of communication became very interesting. So, that also gave a rise, rise to a lot of uh, communication to become an com important topic. The rise of communication technology such as telephone, radio and later television and communication satellite have sparked this interest. People were thinking how it had changed the entire, entire communication process, how people are communicating in a different way. It became, so the academic interest was uh, begin, beginning to uh, pick up. The interest was further promoted by popular 20th century philosophies of progressivism and pragmatism. We have to understand that 20th century was the century when the industrial revolution was full blown and technology had developed in a very strong way. And so, a lot of, lot of philosophies of this becoming the most progressive age and pragmatic ways and how communication can help in this particular pragmatism and progressivism helped uh, generate academic interest. Political and social events in the middle of the past century brought about a keen interest in propaganda, public opinion, media and other communication concerns. We see, we had already talked how the wars and the cold wars which had a lot of communication division, the people were communicating and certain communication was based, was basically to do a lot of propaganda where to or to mold public opinion and, and, and other such concerns of the twelfth, last past century had generated a lot of idea uh, interest in what is communication, how does it happen, why does it happen, what is the theoretical basis. Of course, the rise of social sciences such as psychology and sociology in the twentieth century has given impetus to the study of communication. Psychology and sociology are the first two streams which came into communication in a huge way. It, is, it, were, uh, it was the basically uh, the sociologist who came in and, and, and developed a communication theory. If you look at Everett M. Rogers, Wilbur Schramm and such uh, theorists, you will see that they were all, they all, all had a sociological background. Researcher in most fields consider communication as a secondary process. This is one issue which we, uh, the communication academy uh, had been fighting about. Everybody be believes that communication is a secondary process, but when it comes to disseminating information, it is regarded as the only way to disseminate and this is how to uh, uh, entertain and also uh, lay, make people aware of the issues. Like any project in our country or elsewhere, you will see there is a huge communication component where a lot of media communication is done to make people aware of what is happening, how it is happening, why it is happening. But of course, in the recent years, many have recognized that communication is pivotal to all human experience and have emphasized it above other issues. Now, of course, there is a strong emphasis on communication becoming a very strong point in any communicate, any project, any information process and, and the emphasis is being laid in, in that issues. The field of communication is characterized by its focus on communication as the central topic. So, there is a problem, there is a disjunct that when communication theorists are talking about communication, they talk about communication, but there is a necessity to tie up communication with other disciplines and make it more in multidisciplinary. Communication as I said in the beginning of my um, lecture, I had told you that it, it has a historical background, it has a political background, an economic background, cultural background. Based on all this perspective and of course, geographical background, name it, you find it. And based on all this perspective, a communication is designed. 
therefore we cannot we and we should not have a homogeneous form of communication communication should be very specific to that area to that idea to that specific necessity political economic historical necessity of that area therefore i would like to end by telling you this is very interesting we generally want to say that uh, you are technically arranging communication as if it is a very technical form of communication but in fact communication is 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 a different sort of it has a tendency to think of these levels as different and discrete when actually they are more 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 an organizing tool it helps us in organizing our thought process it helps us in generating a thought process it helps us in taking a thought process forward we have to remember communication is one of those streams which has a wider social perspective a wider political perspective very much rooted into society and but looking at society in a more wider way it encompasses all the social sciences and with technological intervention a lot of technology also comes into communication hence the theories that we will be eventually talking about uh, will be based on these particular areas and that is why we have so many communication theories looking at these particular areas i hope uh, you you understood what i had talked about and next class we will be talking about something else a theory in a very more analytical way okay very well uh, you explained the introduction of communication theory uh, and we'll have a discussion on different segment of communication theory but before that we'd like to ask you because the most of the student uh, feel difficulty in finding good books mm. which book to read and which not to read about the communication theory can you elaborate or can you tell uh, for yeah, the benefit mm, of students i personally believe uh, that um, for indian students keval kumar's book is really good okay uh, it gives you a very basic idea and that is for a uh, graduation and initial post graduation level but if you want to do research then of course there are many books uh say i personally like uh, macluhan's book too and in fact i suggest for uh, further studies one should look at the seminal books rather than a compilation of a book where all the theories are compiled rather than that a, a, a book where, where the, like if you want to read political economic theory better to read harman and somsky directly rather than refer to someone else but initial studies to just have a basic understanding i think keval kumar's um, book is really good i put personally right now i simply i don't know why i i have um, the ma uh, name is just missing but maybe in the next class i'll start with the now the books that they can okay. read about and uh, the other uh, option uh, with a student is to go to the uh, internet and then they jot down the information regarding to the different theory mm -hmm. so what the question is what the uh, important things they yeah. uh, should follow while doing this see the um, internet is a very important tool mm. for research and for actually understanding thing but then cross checking is very important like uh, i had found two three sites where they had write, lay, wrote written i had uh, mentioned uh, two theorists in the initial two slides uh, if you see uh, kats and kan k a h n three sites had written his name as k h a n khan okay so these cross checkings are very important immediately uh, picking up kats and khan he can again google up and the student will come to know that it's not khan it's yeah, khan so this particular cross checking is very important only going to one site and understanding everything will not be possible at least two three sites where this explanation is done okay this will be very important uh, the other very important is with the historical aspect of the different theory which mm. theory came first and mm. which later mm. uh, students of the communication theory got confused because uh, some of the uh, propounder who gave theory in the early 50 or 60 later we find some modification or some kind of clarification yeah another theory propounded by them so in this case what are the um, way out in fact i personally don't believe 
that one should only look at the historical uh, development of theory. Okay. As you, you, it, you it, yourself had said that uh, once someone starts with a theory and eventually modifies and give mm. it. And in fact, his disciples might give a di different texture to the entire theory. Right. So, looking at only initiation, initially you might look at the historical relevance of the theory coming up. Mm -hmm. But that is all. After that, all new, like um, uh, for example, learners, mm -hmm. learner had changed his theory later on, right. looking at the perspective, new new perspective that had emerged. Th this is uh, this is also a historical movement. So there shouldn't be any confusion. Start with the theories. Whether Gardner came first or Sram came first is mm -hmm. not very important. Okay. What is important is their ideology behind the theory. Right. So uh, keeping the ideology ideology in perspective is very important. Yeah, very important. How, how this, what ideology in fact uh, uh, informed this particular theory is what one needs to understand rather than understanding when it starts. 1949 or 1950 mm. has only the context mm. is that in 1949 something happened or 1958 something happened mm. due to which this theory had came up. Mm. You can understand the political economy of that time. The other correlation we find that the development uh, in ideology based like Marxist ideology then the liberal ideology mm. etc. We also find a kind of relation between communication theories. Mm. They develop their mm. theory on the basis of that. Mm. Mm. So uh, a communication a students, a communication sco uh, a scholar need to know the political events what occurred in the last two or three century. That will That's give very a better important. That is why I had been repeating that communication is one area which has a lot to do with history, mm -hmm. with geography, with politics and with economics. Okay. You cannot study communication out of context. Uh, you have to root it and then understand. Okay. So, well friends, with this word we conclude the lecture today and I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on your behalf I thank Professor uh, Saswati Goswami for giving such a wonderful lecture on this introductory lecture on communication theory. Tomorrow we will have uh, discussion on uh, sociological theory of communication. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.